If a reckless scientist created a virus that turned you into a zombie vampire determined to destroy humanity, what would you do? I know I'm going in reverse order with this one, but I'll have the How to Beat the Dark Seekers video coming out soon. In this How to Beat video, we'll follow the Dark Seekers, see if we can make better decisions, and ultimately attempt to beat Dr. Neville and the survivors in I Am Legend. If you think you have a better way, let me know in the comments. If you like these How to Beat videos, consider subscribing. We start out following the remaining Dark Seekers surviving in Manhattan, three years after being infected with the Crippen virus. The virus has altered their bodies and minds significantly at this point, so we need to better understand their physiology and psychology in order to make reasonable recommendations. Physically, the Dark Seekers are formidable. Their bodies constantly release adrenaline, which increases strength and speed due to the extra blood and oxygen flow to the muscles. It dilates pupils for better night vision and focus, as well as quickens reflexes. The main weakness is their severe intolerance to UV radiation, which is fatal to them within seconds. <laughs> Mentally, the Dark Seekers are a bit all over. At first glance, it seems like they're mindless killing machines determined to destroy what's left of humanity. But later in the movie, when one of the Dark Seekers replicates a snare trap that Neville previously used against them and successfully baits Neville into it, it shows that the Dark Seekers can learn, replicate, strategize, and plan. In the movie's alternate ending, the Alpha Dark Seeker and his tribe let Neville live after he returns the Dark Seeker's wife to him. This reveals that the infected have the social capacity to form hierarchies and relationships, as well as make peace with enemies. The Dark Seekers didn't seem to be able to use weapons, drive vehicles, or use complex tools, so despite them being smarter than we thought, they still aren't even remotely at a human intelligence level. In the book, it's more varied and complicated. Neville finds a woman in broad daylight and forms a romantic relationship with her, only to find out that she was actually a Dark Seeker sent to spy on him. She reveals to Neville that when the dead were infected, they were reanimated into mindless killing machines. But when the living were infected, those that didn't immediately perish retained much more of their human characteristics and intelligence. She also reveals that they had developed medication that diminishes the worst of their symptoms, which might be why she was able to deceive him so well. The novel Dark Seekers ultimately capture Jail and execute him for his crimes against their species. Before Neville's life is ended, he finally realizes that from their perspective, he was the evil one for murdering and experimenting on thousands of them in an attempt to find a cure. I know it's hard to watch movie characters make bad decisions, but you can test your own apocalypse survival skills by checking out this video's sponsor, Life After. It's a free-to-play doomsday survival game that has 200 million registered players worldwide and was named the most competitive game of 2019 by Google Play. It's available on iOS, Android, and PC. Like Dr. Neville, you and your trusty dog scavenge for resources, hunt wild animals, craft weapons, build your home base, set traps, fight mutated zombies, all while trying to find survivors and put human civilization back together. Neville doesn't have to deal with the Umbrella Corporation upgrading these zombies, but you will in life after, with the new Resident Evil crossover event happening August 27th to September 10th. The Raccoon Police Department is a new dungeon with a G Stage 2, Tyrant, Executioner, and Nemesis as bosses, you can equip special items and outfits from Resident Evil characters like camouflaging your dog with a zombie skin, role-playing as Leon Kennedy or Ada Wong, or ripping through the wasteland on an RPD patrol motorcycle. So if you want to take control, make your own bad decisions, and support the channel, use my links in the description to enter a giveaway to win a $50 Amazon gift card. You'll get special Resident Evil rewards just for logging in, like an Ada Wong figurine ornament you can display on your home's mantle. Thanks to Netties for sponsoring this video and helping me share my uneducated survival advice, join me now on Life After and survive the frightening evil. Since we're talking about the 2007 movie, but also since this would be boring if they only had the intelligence of a hyena, let's assume we're dealing with the enraged Neanderthal or early Homo sapien variety of dark seekers. They can use some tools, learn by observation, possess relatively long-term memory, have limited speech and language, some social structure, the ability to domesticate and cooperate with animals, are minimally innovative, and are carnivorous predators who can hunt well. So one day, you're huddled up with your fam, 
them, catching some Z's, and some dude busts in with his gat and guns down your bro who's having a midnight snack, then abducts your girl before riding off into the sunset in his supercharged stank. What would you do? It's going to get dark here for a bit, sorry. According to the National Criminal Justice Reference Service, the survival rate for abductees at different time periods is not good. Abductees not found within one hour have a 44% chance of being dead. It goes up to 74% within three hours and 91% dead within 24 hours. And within seven days, the abductee is almost guaranteed to be dead. Considering they're dealing with an armed man who's probably been abducting a experimenting on and killing other dark seekers for years, you already know this. You could throw a tarp over your head and bum rush Neville right then and there, but he just blasted you with his AR-15 before you could get close. Your dark seeker girlfriend will probably be dead by the time you find Neville. If you can find her within a few days, there's a slight chance she'll still be alive. But unfortunately, it's more likely that you're only going to be getting revenge for her murder. Neville takes off after abducting your girl. You need to hunt this guy down ASAP. The problem is, he only comes out during the day when there's an abundance of the sunlight which kills you in seconds. You don't know where this guy lives, but you've probably seen or heard him roaming around on the daily, so it's safe to say that he does live around here. Still, Manhattan's a large area. First thing, round up your crew. If you're gonna find a needle in a haystack, you need a lot of scouts, and you need to start communicating with the other dark seekers around the city. Dr. Neville already ran the numbers in the movie. Based on infection rates, fatality rates, and the percentage of the population that was immune, there are roughly 588 million dark seekers in the world. In 2007, there were around 1.5 million people living in Manhattan out of the 6.6 .6 billion people worldwide. Manhattan made up 0.002% of the world's population, which means well over 120,000 dark seekers are surviving in Manhattan with Neville. Since Manhattan was ground zero, this number is probably higher. Maybe over the years some died along the way from starvation, but there would have been a lot of humans, corpses, food, and animals to eat. There are 262 city blocks, so there are roughly 5 to 600 dark seekers residing in every city block of Manhattan. Someone had to have spotted Neville returning home, but maybe nobody knew where he was. They were too afraid of Neville, or they just can't communicate very well. How else could you find him with just your squad? You could use your domesticated Dark Seeker dogs to track him down. In the movie, Dark Seekers had an enhanced sense of smell, to the point that Neville had to use vinegar to block his scent trail up to his house. While Dark Seekers cooperating with infected dogs seems odd, if we're assuming they have the intelligence of Neanderthals or early Homo sapiens, it's actually realistic. According to National Geographic, early Homo sapiens and Neanderthals did form dog-human alliances. This was because the dogs could track and find the prey better than humans, and the humans could kill it from a distance, avoiding a risky close encounter for the dog. All you need is for the infected dog to get a whiff of something Neville encountered, like at the music store, pier, golfing spot, etc., then start tracking the scent. You could also have the dog track the scent of your girl, which may be stronger considering nobody's taking showers. An uninfected bloodhound can track a scent up to a 130 miles away. That's 10 times as far as Manhattan is long. The discovery shows Mythbusters proved that a bloodhound could pretty much track your scent down no matter what you did, meaning Neville's vinegar would not have done shit to stop a KV infected dog from finding him. If you had domesticated a KV infected dog, you should employ them to track Neville down as soon as the sun goes down. They'd likely find Neville within the night. It's also distinctly possible that you don't have a KV infected dog that you've domesticated and trained to track humans down. What could you do then? Neville is not being stealthy. Maybe he was at the start of the outbreak, but the combination of complacency and mental decline has caused Neville to be very obvious about his movements and patterns. He's driving a gas-guzzling truck with the windows down, blasting Bob Marley, and that's when he's not ripping through the town in a bright red supercharged V8 Shelby Mustang, blasting his rifle at deer. Those sounds are going to carry an echo through the lifeless city. <laughs> But 
just hearing him go for a cruise around town or golfing won't help you find his home. You'd want to go to the top of the tallest buildings in Manhattan to scout and observe his movements during the day. The Empire State Building, One World Trade Center, and Central Park Tower are good ones to start with as they'll give you varied vantage points over all parts of Manhattan. During the day, the intense UV can bounce off of surfaces and get reflected into your eyes. Given our vulnerability to UV rays and that due to the adrenaline dumping into your body, your pupils will be fully dilated as well. You could be blinded by looking out of the windows during high noon. I'd say that wearing polarized sunglasses with UV protection would work, but that may be asking too much from the Neanderthal brain dark seekers. It might be more reasonable to recommend that you scout from the top of the buildings when the sun is low. To better hear his movements without the window barrier, you could use tarps to pitch a tent on the rooftop while wearing lots of clothing to eliminate the UV exposure. Since he would not want to be out past dark where he's most vulnerable, listening and watching for where he's driving at sundown would give us a general location. I'd wager that he lives in the residential areas with less of a dense population of dark seekers around, as well as smaller, more securable buildings. He wouldn't want to be in an apartment building because there's no way to secure all the entrances. This would mean either the Upper West Side, Upper East Side, Greenwich Village, East Village, or somewhere similar. He might live in New Jersey or one of the other boroughs, but that should be the easiest thing to cross off just by observing from the building tops if he crossed the bridges, or based on which bridges were blown. I'm not sure if the Dark Seeker's brains retained enough grooves and folds to understand this, but simply tracking his movements would be enough to locate him. From the tower tops, it's likely you would see him at the South Street Seaport Pier every day at the bottom of Manhattan, golfing off the USS Intrepid in the middle of Manhattan, and possibly driving up to the Metropolitan Museum of Art to fish near the top of Manhattan. The Dark Seekers would not know the names, but they'd know the locations. We'd see that he didn't cross any of the intact bridges, but most importantly, with time, we'd see or hear his vehicle coming from and returning to somewhere in the Greenwich Village region at sundown. Then, it's just a matter of hiding out in closer and closer buildings until you're pretty much on top of them. This whole process should not take more than a few days, maybe a week at most. Like we talked about earlier, your girl that Neville abducted is likely dead at this point, but there is not really a faster way to find him as far as I can tell. To narrow down where his actual home is, you can search for his truck at night. It should be one of the only ones without weeds growing on it and clear windows. It's likely he parked his truck close to where he lives and wouldn't use any of the underground parking because it's too dangerous with the lack of sunlight. Once you find his car, hide in one of the nearby buildings and see which apartment door he comes out of the next morning. Once you know his exact apartment, you can figure out how to get to him. You need to tread with caution and scout him out to see his weapons, setup, patterns, etc. Even though you could overpower him toe to toe, he's got an immense firepower advantage, wielding weapons that you aren't capable of wielding. He's also inherently smarter than you. He'll routinely check the condition of any defenses he's constructed, like his IEDs and UV lights in the park, which you'll now know about by scouting him out. You might not know what they are exactly, but you can reasonably guess it's harmful to you. Time is of the essence, so skipping this step is probably necessary if you want any chance of finding her alive. If you've watched my Tao video, you know where I'm going. I'd recommend having you and your Dark Seeker crew sneak into the unsecured adjacent apartment at night. Then, in the morning when he leaves, break into his house from within the building, save your girl, then lie in wait. When he comes back home at sundown, he won't know that anything is wrong, and as soon as he opens the door, you can jump him. <laughs> That should be game over. There are a few other methods and strategies that you could try too. You could use clothing to cover yourself from UV rays and attack him during the day, but it's unwise and risky. One clothing mishap when you're chasing or fighting him and you're dead. And during the day, he's always armed. I'm not sure how it would help, but you could use the sewer system to travel by day if need be. If this happened in the winter with recent snow, Tracking him would be incredibly easy. All you have to do is find and follow the truck tires or footprints. You could try to use traps like in the movie, but it's also a bit risky.
when the Alpha Darkseeker trapped Neville, they almost got him, but they did get lucky that Neville was there at the right time, hit his head knocking him unconscious, then stuck himself with his own knife. If Neville got snared midday, or didn't get knocked unconscious, he'd have gotten out of the trap in time. In either of those circumstances, he'll realize that you're more intelligent and threatening than he previously thought, and he'll be more on guard. Their trap partially works, causing the death of his dog, but Neville does escape. The next night, it appears that Neville is sitting at his desk on the pier. It should have been obvious that it's a trap. You know that this guy will not be out at night chilling on the pier when he's most vulnerable. And if he is, he's got plans for you. Don't engage him. You need Neville alive anyways, so he can take you back to his home where he took your girl. If you kill him or cause him to suicide himself with a grenade, you'll never find her. Just wait until he goes home and then kill him. The Alpha almost captures Neville alive, but another survivor rescues him. Luckily for us, she accidentally leads the Dark Seekers back to his home. <laughs> The frontal charge while screaming is scary, no doubt, but it's incredibly dangerous because now this dude knows you're coming, and he probably has defenses set up. Attacking from the rear of the building, the rooftop, or breaking through the adjacent building is safer because there's more cover. This hasty charge cost them a lot of lives. Eventually, they corner Neville in the basement where he pulls out a grenade. This is hard to counter because the Dark Seekers might not understand it's a grenade. It's safe to say they don't, so them getting blown to pieces was unavoidable. <laughs> To make it interesting, say you, the Alpha Dark Seeker, did recognize it as an M67 fragmentation grenade from a barely accessible memory of before the outbreak when you played Call of Duty too much. You should back off immediately and find a new plan, because confronting Neville will just cause him to bomb you and your girl. Once Neville let the grenade spoon fly, all hope of saving your girl is gone. The grenade fuse is activated, and in 4 seconds anything within 5 meters will be destroyed. According to Quora, here's what you should do. Dive behind nearby cover immediately. If you can pull a table over, then do it, but if you need to take a step to reach that table, then forget it. Lay face down with your feet toward the explosive, cross your feet at the ankles to to avoid exposing more sensitive areas. Cover your head with your hands and use your forearms to cover your ears. Lastly, open your mouth slightly to equalize any pressure from the blast concussion. Yeah, I know, there's no way the Dark Seekers would know this information, but it doesn't matter anyways because after Neville dived into your horde of Dark Seekers, he'll be shocked when the grenade does not make a bang and he's still alive. Because the grenade was an inert dummy grenade as indicated by the blue spoon. You can now get your revenge and your girl can be saved. Sure, she has a barely working cure in her system, but it's likely it doesn't work. The virus mutates infecting her again, or her constant exposure to you reinfects her. Let's recap how things could have gone down differently. To be honest, they shouldn't have let a threat like Neville live as long as he did. They should have hunted him down and killed him the first chance they had, especially when he was abducting them left and right preventing this whole situation from happening. Killing Neville earlier on would have prevented you, your wife, and your friends from dying and prevented a cure from falling into the uninfected hands. Anna and Ethan would have gone to Vermont to the survivor group and survived either way. The Alpha Dark Seeker got lucky that his trap worked on Neville, that Neville lost it mentally and his rescuer led them back to his home, and that his Dark Seeker girl was still alive. None of these things were reliable or probable. Their plan seemed to be working, but their hastiness led to a confrontation where Neville fragged everyone, with Anna and Ethan being the only survivors. Realistically, if Neville abducted your girl, well, it's likely she'd be dead before you could find her, even with all our strategies. With our help, the Alpha Darkseeker could have prevented his death and a lot of Darkseeker casualties by sneaking into Neville's home when he left in the morning. I'd say that we could ultimately beat Dr. Neville, but just not in time to save your girl. Thanks for watching, and remember, if the evil man that invaded your domicile started rigging shit up and put a juicy blood vial on a blanket at the entrance with ropes and pulleys all around it, just ignore it. It's obviously a trap.